Hello, Network to Code community. My name is Tim Fayola. I'm a developer advocate here at Network to Code. And today we're going to go over an overview of Nautobot 1.1.0's key features that we think you'll be interested in. These are really cool. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, these are the uh, five features we'll be covering today computed custom fields, config context schemas, saving GraphQL queries, read only jobs, and plugin defined navigation. So computed custom fields is the first one we'll be looking at. So a computed field allows a user to create a read-only custom field from data that's already in the database. And the following slides will walk us through an example. So from the web UI, if you go to extensibility and go to computed fields, um, and then if you add a computed field, uh, this, is, this is the formula C. Now the content type, excuse me, the content type refers to like the type of object you want the field computed for. In our example here, we're going to use interfaces as an example. Okay. So uh, the important part to focus on here really is the template part. In the template field, you put, you can paste in the Jinja template that you want to use to create the custom computed field. And in this case, uh, we're going to do an example that's, that says um, interface name dot device name dash 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 remote interface name dot remote device name. That'll be the, uh, the custom computed field we do. And also notice I'm specifying a fallback value in the event that the field that I've specified can't render. Now, as soon as it's created, the computed field takes effect on all the specified objects. So immediately after I uh, created, excuse me, <laughs> this computed field, uh, I went to this interface on this uh, AMS Edge 01 device, and this uh, connection description uh, appeared right there. And on the left here, you see that it's uh, Ethernet 11.AMS Edge 01 dash 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 Ethernet 11.AMS Edge 02. You can also retrieve computed fields programmatically via the opt in fields equals computed fields qualifier in your query. Um, and here's an example of that. Uh, that flag being used in a real query. And here's also an example of the computed field data that I got back for that interface. Config context schemas. Config context themselves are a way, they're an existing feature within Nautobot, and they are a way to allow Nautobot to store arbitrary YAML and JSON data. Uh, for example, if you wanted Nautobot to use that data to, let's say, generate some configs. Um, and especially when you're generating configs and at scale, it's helpful to put constraints on certain types of data. And that's what these config context schemas do. So here's an example. The config context schema here specifies the following restrictions for uh, NTP server data. Um, basically, you have to have two items in a list, they have to be of string type, and they have to be in the IPv4 format. And this exact example I'm using here is also in our documentation at the link shown. And here's just a closer up look at the schema we created. Now, as a note, these schemas can also be stored in a Git repository as well. And you would add those Git repositories in the extensibility drop-down menu, the top level menu. And just looking under data sources, you can specify the Git repository that you want to point Nautobot to. OK, so here's what we're going to do. I call it a negative example. We're going to make a config context. We're going to apply the NTP schema we just created to it, and it's going to fail. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. And well, first of all, just notice here that when we're creating the new config context, we're specifying the exact schema we just created. OK, and within the data section, of the config context, we're going to specify a list with one with one IPv4 address in there. Okay. 
And that is that, that attempt is going to fail because the uh, the list of data we provided is too short. So we'll get that flag uh, when we try to create the schema using this data. Now, we can go ahead and fix the data on the same screen. We can add a second IPv4 string uh, to the NTP server's list. And then this, uh, this config context would then complete. You can save GraphQL queries now. And this is super exciting, at, at least to a nerd like me. OK, so uh, within the extensibility dropdown menu, there's a new section under data management called GraphQL queries. And clicking on that will take you to the GraphQL queries main screen. So uh, a, a typical workflow here might be, hey, look, you can use Nanobot's graph IQL interface to create your query and tune it. Um, and then you could, let's say, uh, copy that query on the left-hand side there, and then go to create a new GraphQL query to save. Um, and you can do that um, either on the GraphQL queries main page or via the uh, GraphQL queries menu and then hitting the plus button. So you'd fill out the form, and you would just paste the query in that you just tuned. Okay. Then you'd go ahead and create it. And so in order to access that saved query, you would just go back to the GraphQL queries main screen and click on the query you just created. And from that query's main page, you can um, edit the query. You can execute the query. Uh, you can open the query in Nautobot's Graph IQL interface. And you can also clone it uh, or delete the query as well. So full functionality here uh, from the main page for a given query. And then you can also save a query and execute a query programmatically. To execute a stored query, um, you would do a post request to this endpoint we have here. And notice that there's a you reference the slug in there in that uh, in that excuse me, in that uh, call. And that slug information is available on the GraphQL queries uh, main page. Read only jobs. OK, so now when you're, when you're creating a new job and you want to make sure it just does read only work, you can explicitly set the read only equals true uh, meta class attribute. By default, and when it's not specified, it just goes to false. But explicitly setting it to true makes the job a read-only job. This is detailed by a couple things. First of all, it whenever you see the job, it'll have a read-only badge right by it. Okay. Um, additionally, one of the cool things here is when you're um, going to execute the job, uh, it removes the commit changes checkbox uh, because by by, uh, by default, a read-only job is not going to make any changes to the database. This read-only job also eliminates any confusion for uh, re report-style job users, because uh, prior, when it was just executed as a dry run, you would get all these log messages about changes to the database and then a rollback to all the changes in the database. These messages go away when you execute a read-only job. Uh, and finally, we're going to talk about plugin defined navigation, which is another really cool way for developers to customize the Nautobot user experience. So, up until Nautobot 1.1.0, uh, a plugin's menu options resided in a nav menu group under the plugin's nav menu tab, like I have shown here. The Nautobot chat ops uh, is installed, and the options are all that the menu is there under the plugin's menu. Starting in 1.1.0, the developers can add tabs, groups, items, and buttons in the top navigation menu. Uh, and the example below shows the, the Nautobot uh, chat ops nav menu group being promoted uh, to a nav menu tab named chat ops using this new plugin defined navigation feature. And I'll also include here a link to a real example uh, that shows how to use this. Um, how to use this plugin to find navigation. All right, well, this concludes this Nautobot 1.1.0 features overview.
Have an awesome day. Thank you.